What is going on you guys? Jacob Bardotti here back for another video and today we're going to be talking about something that is pretty hot on the internet right now in regards Mustangs like Mustang owners are targeted on this because it's a class action lawsuit that was brought up against Ford for the manual transmissions for cars from 11 to 2019. I think 2020 was probably rolled in there as well. This is for cars with the MT82. That's what this transmission is, uh, I guess, part number or model number. Yeah, the Gitrag MT82. So it was made in China. There's the MT82 and the MT82-D4. MT82-D4, I believe, started in 2017, manufactured for the 2018 model. So I said a bunch of numbers and stuff like that right there, but the gist of this whole thing is Ford has known about some issues that the vocal people of Mustang community have talked about for a long time now having issues with the transmission, the manual transmission in our cars. And Ford kind of just kept throwing technical service bulletins. They did a couple of procedures, which I'll get into. But the whole gist of this thing is that there have been a lot of people talking about how bad the NT82 is, and now there's a class action lawsuit against it. So I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail, throw you guys up on the head and go for a drive. So I actually called the law firm that's doing this class action lawsuit. So like me personally, gave them a call and it kind of went like this. I haven't heard back from them, but I called, talked to the receptionist, said I had a Mustang 2013. She was kind of weary about it. Like, why are you calling? Are you a reporter or something like that? Because apparently reporters are trying to get this information. And I said, no, I legitimately own the car, um, but I am kind of reporting on it. So shh, we'll keep that a secret. And then she said, she'll transfer me to the attorney. The attorney was busy on another phone call. I left a message for that attorney, said exactly everything, you know, my name, number. So waiting on a phone call. So I'll keep you guys updated on this, but I am trying to do the research so that way if anything's involved, I wanna know exactly from the law firm what's all going behind the scenes. Got you guys on my head now. We're gonna go ahead and start her up. Yeah, she's already warmed up. I was driving for quite a while. Still feels weird whenever it airs up on itself and it just like starts moving. It's weird to have a car that just moves up and down on its own. Oh, I love bags. Going over speed bumps without a care in, in the world because it's right all the way up. I don't have to even rip off my lip or anything. Let's see if I can hop out of here. See, this one's got a dip. No rub. Let's go. And back to right height. Pull up an article over here. It's from carcomplaints.com. I'm actually gonna go to it right now. And what this was talking about, I'm using this as like little talking points. So you'll see my phone on. But I love this little mount so I don't have to hold it. So it says the plaintiffs claim the transmission problems caused the owner's expense in repairing pr repeated problems with the shift forks, uh, the shift shafts, synchros, and clutch assemblies. So apparently it's blowing people's clutches out too. Um, and they're saying that basically it's making, it's a defective transmission in the entire design based on the fact that the NT2 is designed for cars with less horsepower than the 5.0 and that the transmission is Chinese made where they usually would use Tremec or Borg Warner for transmissions like the Shelby is a TR6060 from Tremec. Tremec is amazing. TR6060s are amazing. If you guys have never felt a Shelby transmission, it feels way different than the MT82 just by design. And these were made in China. I don't know where Tremec is. I think maybe Germany. Double check me. Leave a comment down below if it is Germany. But basically Ford wanted to save some costs. So they went to China for manufacturing. A lot of companies do that. And with that, the quality went way down, right to the ground. And what the owners that the law firm, I guess, are representing, what they're claiming is that the car is unsafe because it can blow the transmission when you're on the freeway or something, and or in town, you don't have any kind of gears to use anymore, which is obviously dangerous when your car can't move. It's not a car. And then two, they're claiming that it makes the car less desirable and the value of it to drop. So I guess they're trying to sue for damages on that front, which is really interesting because these cars have been around for a long, long time. I mean, since 2010, that's when the 2011 models came out, the 5.0. So these cars have been around for almost 10 years now, well, over 10 years, the, the 5.0 and the transmission. Yet now people are claiming the value, whoa, that dude was really trying to jump the gun on that. Uh, they're trying to claim that the values dropped because of the transmissions. When in reality, the, the engine is really what everyone wants. But it is known that the transmissions are pretty bad. It leaves notchiness at cold. That's what the article is saying too. It also has uh, repeat problems. So people are claiming they go in for uh, the fix and then 
they do all the things they want, the synchros, the shift shafts, the forks, Ford does everything and then new fluid, yet it happens again. It just happens right over again. Ford is saying that that is just normal wear and tear. Let's see if I can gun in on this. Nope, that ends. Yep, yep, not a smart play if I were to gun it. But we having fun, we having fun. So basically what they're saying is that it's a repeat problem. I go in, get my shift forks replaced, it still doesn't feel like it should. It still has issues. And Ford is trying to blame that on normal wear and tear. That is completely normal. That's not normal. The transmission should not be forced into gear. And mine, in cold, whenever it just rolls out of the garage, especially in the winter, which I know California winter, especially in Northern California where I'm at, isn't winter. It doesn't snow, doesn't get below freezing like more than a day a year. So I understand that. But it does get really notchy. Here's what I've done to my transmission to try and mitigate any of the issues that I've mentioned before. Because I did know about these, so I wanted to prevent it. I didn't want an issue with my transmission. First thing I did was the MGW shifter. I also did the AMSOIL fluids. I did the, I think, Steena, no, white line transmission bushing insert. And then I also did a stainless braided clutch line with a Mantic Cerametallic Twin Disc Clutch. All of that together is probably around $3,000, maybe a little bit more with labor. I did a lot of things myself. But I've spent $3,000 to make sure my transmission wasn't going to be an issue. Should you do that on a car that has a V8 and is made to be a performance car? In my mind, no. I shouldn't have had to do that. Go way back to the Gen 5 Camaro. It had the TR6060. The Shelby had the TR6060. The 5.0, MT82. Why is that? Ford, they wanted to save a lot of costs. Like I said, they went to China to make these transmissions. They do not like high RPMs. Once I've done this, I haven't had issues at high RPMs. It was mainly due to the clutch. The clutch will fix all high RPM issues. Plus, you can add more power capabilities and holding. Like my transmission right now, well, the clutch can hold a thousand torque. Transmission, not so much. It'll probably have to get built eventually. In case I ever wanted to add more power, it's gonna be teetering on the edge until it gets built. But again, should you really have to do that when the Gen 5 Camaro came with the TR6060 and an LS3, I think? I'm not too familiar with the Camaros, but I do know they came with a lot better transmissions. I know the C6 Corvette came with the TR6060 and the LS3 after 08. And the TR6060, man, if it's in all of these other performance V8s, why didn't you guys put it in the Mustang? And now Ford is gonna have to pay for that. I think, I don't think they're gonna win this because there's literally six technical service bulletins on these transmissions. There's a known issue that these things are not reliable and I guess not through total user error, just by performance shifting and performance driving, you can blow these things and totally grind up your gears. But I think that little decision to save money on the original cost of the 5.0 and this chassis and everything like that, the driveline, is gonna cost them in the end, big time. So I'm hoping on the S650, I think that's the next chassis, I'm hoping that on that chassis, they go to a TR6060 because I swear, if they keep putting these MT82s in their cars, they're gonna have issues after issues after issues because people like me, who still have done everything in their own power and spent money out of their pocket to upgrade the driveline, even though I'm in A, not even boosted, I'm not really pushing the car so far beyond its limits that I had to do all of this extra work and pull money out of my pocket to do it, that's kind of BS. I love Ford, I love Mustangs, I just think hindsight's 2020, and we can all see this was not their best decision. Let me give you guys a quick little pull here. I gotta get over, get off on the freeway. And then I'm gonna probably wrap this thing up. So let's do a little third gear pull. 5,500. That's a good little pull. Of course in Mexico, that's where I do all my pulls. I have to test our Brembo's out right here because everybody likes to come to a stop. 
Please don't rear in me. Please don't rear in me. Please don't rear in me. Why'd you get out of the lane? I hate when people do that. I'm coming to a hard stop and that guy just put on his blinker and got out of the way. Thank God the guy behind him was paying attention because that's how you cause an accident. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up, but I'd love to hear you guys' comments down below. Let me know, do you guys drive an automatic or a manual? Because I just wanna know what the audience drives here. I'm a big manual fan. But I also wanna know, what do you guys think about the whole lawsuit? You think Ford deserves to pay out to the Mustang owners because of these issues that are known and have been known, they keep dodging it? Or do you think it's kind of like, well, you knew what you were getting into, it was a known fact when you got the car. A lot of people know about the MT-82. So do you think that we are just kind of like, well, you signed up for it, you bought the car, you should have known that that was your weak point. So yeah, I just want to hear you guys' thoughts, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up right here. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, then please comment, like, and subscribe. And you already know, I'll catch you guys next time.